inclusion yes it's about doing the right thing but you actually get more when you're more inclusive because when you get five perspectives instead of one you're actually winning you're having more iq so the moment that people realize that it's not just the right thing is actually the most effective thing So for me, I think I had uh, many of those, but um, the one defining moment was uh, when I was in Australia a few months ago and uh, I wasn't employed and I really struggled to reinvent myself and find my path. And uh, I did it. I did it like I, I'm, a, I have, I'm a consultant, I'm a public speaker today, I'm a social advocate, all these things that make me really, really happy. And I discovered that my passion is actually to help people find their path, whatever that is. So that's how I found it, by looking at actually my own challenge as an opportunity to help others. For me, the question is, uh, is always like this, what if? And uh, it's not one specific question, it's a what if mentality. So is uh, whenever you think that you have an answer, is looking at it from a different perspective, is trying to look at it from the other side and say, what if we did it differently? Is there a different way? And I think for me, this approach, it's all about also diversity and inclusion and, and trying to really bring different viewpoints into the conversation. I think for me, it's not only for me, it's for everyone. I love to say that we are one in eight billion because there are eight billion people in, in the world and, and thinking that collectively, we are so powerful, but we tend to think that uh, when we are just one person, we are tiny, but I do believe in the power of one at scale. That's really how we change the world. And, and so me, Veronica, you, Craig, the audience, everyone has, has that power, but sometimes I think we need a little reminder that we can change things. So there is one thing, and uh, I want people to really understand that inclusion Yes, it's about doing the right thing, but you actually get more when you're more inclusive because when you get five perspectives instead of one, you're actually winning, you're having more IQ. So the moment that people realize that it's not just the right thing, it's actually the most effective thing, the most beneficial thing, the, the one thing that everyone is going to get a value from, that's, that's what I would love companies and, and organizations to realize. I love the uh, the fact that uh, we don't really look for a cultural fit. We look for this cultural ad. We look for people as they are. We're not trying to change anyone. I, I'm welcome the, the way I am. At the same time, I'm pushed to be a better version of myself every time. You are all tough at giving feedback, constructive feedback, so that we all get better. And I think it's, it's a wonderful thing. And that's something that, that I love is knowing that we're all here with our diversity, but also coming from a point of humility where we want to be better. We want to be our better self tomorrow. So I think, uh, to inspire someone, you need to be very good at understanding your audience. And for me, the, the best uh, inspiring leaders are the ones who are able to add value, always adding value, but understanding that you have to change and shift your style and the way that you deliver the messages and, and what you deliver based on who is in front of you. So I think that for me, the, the most inspiring leaders are the ones who are really good at human connections, who, are, who really connect with the audience so that you can get inspired because the same message might be sent by two different people. And for me, it's not only about the message, it's how it's transmitted and how something emotional is evoked in me. So there's also that, that emotional feeling that you have to get out of people so that they say, I am inspired. I am inspired is not just I'm learning or I'm listening, is there's something in me, there's a feeling. Um, so I think that's that's really important. In terms of uh, inspiring leaders, I think there are there are many out there. But one that uh, I particularly always uh, looked up to is uh, Tim Cook. 
because I worked at Apple for seven years and uh, I had the opportunity to uh, to see him at the, the campus in, uh, in Cupertino and uh, the way that he spoke, he was just so down to earth. Like when he went on stage, I didn't even know that it was him. Only when he started to speak, I, I recognized the, the voice and the way that he's able to really connect whether he's talking to the investors in the quarterly calls, whether he's talking to the teams when he goes to the stores, I think that humanity of leadership is something that, that I really admire. Okay, um, so this is a hard one. Uh, so one, one of them is um, Garota de Ipanema from Vinicius de Moraes. So it's, a, it's a Brazilian song that is, a, is very, very well known and it talks about the, the girl in Ipanema in, in Rio de Janeiro. And because I, I grew up there, not so much about the lyric, but it reminds me of who I am. It reminds me that, yes, I'm Spanish and I live in Hong Kong, but I actually grew up in Brazil and, and other places. And every time I hear it, it, it kind of brings me back to, uh, to those years in, uh, in the beautiful city of Rio. So that would be one. Uh, the second one would be A Thousand Years. I have died every day waiting for you. Darling, don't be afraid. I have... It's the song that uh, we played when, uh, when we got married, Dave and I in, uh, in Ibiza. And, and I think it defines who I am because it talks about loyalty. I think because I had to move so much, for me, the, the things that I had was, was always people and, and being loyal to my friends and, and to my family and to my husband. I think for me, is one of the, the values that I really treasure because I couldn't really treasure anything else because we were always moving everywhere. So that, lo that human loyalty, I think it's, uh, it's something that, uh, that defines me. And the last one is the other uh, song from uh, Simon and Gar Garfunkel. And this is a song, um, what was the name? Uh, the, the Sound of Silence. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. It's a song that um, we used to play with, uh, with my dad when we were doing like a road, uh, road trips when I was a kid. And I didn't speak English at the time, so I can't really say that the song defined who I am. But it's funny because it's a song that talks about silence and being an introvert. It, uh, it's a song that uh, really defines a lot of, of who I am and how I do enjoy the silence. And, and I'm able, of course, to socialize and have that, that extroverted side of me. But when I listen to that song, now that I understand it, <laughs> a lot of things I can really relate to. I think there are, there are a few, and uh, there are a few that I've read a second time. I think the books that really shape you, I would really recommend everyone to read them a second time. Uh, one that um, has uh, really marked me is uh, the, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's, uh, it's one that uh, I um, has always shaped who I am, and I always say that uh, a good habit is going to um, do much more than motivation. So basically, a good habit is going to make sure that you go to the gym and that you, you don't rely on, on motivation. And, and for me, it really defines who I am. Uh, in, the, in the area of sports, for example, I'm a triathlete and everybody tends to say, oh, you must be so motivated. And the thing is, I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm not that motivated. But oh, on most days, not necessarily all days, I am. But when you build a good habit, that actually makes you get out of bed. That goes, makes you go out. That makes you start running. So I always uh, encourage people not to rely on motivation. Motivation is a bonus, but if you have a good habit, I think uh, you have a foundation. For me, I think I talked about it um, before and is the, the expression of what if. I think for me that uh, shows curiosity, that shows that there are different ways of doing things, that shows that we are all different and that shows that, that we question our own thinking. So I think this, uh, this what if uh, mentality is something that uh, I apply, I try to apply, not always, sometimes I forget and I'm like, oh, I have to look at this from a, from a different perspective, but it's definitely something that, that I try to, uh, to be aware of.